Lost Cano Talk, we are live for the final time this season. It's episode 45 of the Pavis Perspective, powered by Better Bites. As always, if you want to check out Better Bites Computer Shop in Mapley, fantastic notch from business, it is in the description to the video. George, have you ever had to struggle to get yourself up for a Pavis Perspective like this one? Or are you quite looking forward to discussing what, what needs to be discussed? No, I'm looking forward to it. I, I actually am. I think there's a lot that we need to go over, a lot that needs to be talked about. Um, since since the game, obviously, on Monday, I've been quite quiet on Twitter, uh, just sort of been reading through p- people's perspective on things and, and looking around to see, obviously, certain things are going on outside of Knots as well that could affect Knots. Um, people's views on the ownership, things like that. Um, yeah, it's been It's been quite an interesting couple of days. Um, my wounds are nearly healed from Monday. Uh, difficult one to get over in the manner that we lost, literally 10 seconds away. 10 seconds. Um, but that's football. We've got to learn from these mistakes. I think for me personally, you know, a, a few of, of, of my friends will tell you I was not confident going into the playoffs against Grimsby at all. No. Um, no I feel like the, the nerves were, were like never before, like never before. And I think it's because inevitably I knew that we had that sort of manner of loss in us and we've seen it a few times this season so yeah sort of I'm over the worst of the emotions of, of losing the game but I'm looking forward to discuss my views on the season and uh, going forward yeah I think you'll have uh, you'll have seen if you watched our vlog right at the end we're we're sat talking in the stand with no one behind us I think we're the last two knots fans in the stadium we we're asked to leave by the stewards where we are couldn't get up. I was absolutely gutted. Um, heartbroken is probably the word. So um, there's lots to talk about. This could probably be a two-hour episode, if we're honest. There's so much to talk about. It's unbelievable. Um, if you have uh, just joined us, our poll tonight is who do you think is going to win the playoffs? Wrexham, Solihull, Chesterfield or Grimsby? Have your say. Will, as always, tell you I was right at the end. And this will be the first one this season, George, where we're not doing a team lineup at the end. Yeah, it's so, going to be strange, isn't it? It's a bit of a different one. No score prediction. Um, get your questions in. I can see we've got Luke. Uh, I think one's the Halifax channel. Uh, Chris is regarding that the home advantage worked well for both of us, didn't it? So um, I expected Halifax to lose against Chesterfield, if I'm honest. I, I did expect that. Um, and I'll put my reasons why towards the end when I talk about, about the playoffs. But we'll get cracked on and this is going to open some wounds. Let's talk about the game. From my point of view... The better team were Grimsby. Yeah. Not not as much as people are making out. We've had comments on our videos from Grimsby fans saying, yeah, definitely agree. The best team definitely won. Better team by a mile. I don't think they're a better team by a mile by any stretch. I thought they created more personally. Yeah. If they had an end product, they'd have been it'd have been an absolute mauling, wouldn't it? Because you, you just gotta look at the, the stats in the game. They they had a lot more shots on goal than we did. Um and they just, they did, they looked dangerous getting to the box and, you know, they got in some really dangerous positions, but they just couldn't quite finish it off, could they? No, they couldn't. Do you know what, though? What I will give Notch credit for, and I know we're going to talk about set pieces in a minute, I thought Notch defended very, very well. I personally did. I really did. Yeah. Yes, set pieces are obviously an issue and we've conceded two from three kicks. At half time, we'd conceded seven corners and nothing had happened from a corner. Second half, there was so many corners as well. We defended corners well. It was set pieces that let us down from free kicks. Like, I think we actually did okay defensively. I thought Lacey was fantastic. Cameron, you could tell Cameron wasn't 100% fit. Chickson, I thought, was immense. I thought it was absolutely unbelievable. Uh, Richardson, we'll get on to in a minute. Um, and Brindley was, was Richard Brindley. Look, we had two out of that back five that have only just come back into the squad. So, um, if you can hear, I don't know, can you hear the rain, George, on my end? Um, I can't hear your end. Can you hear it at my end? I can't. I don't know what else can Absolutely battering against the window behind me. It is. It's loud. It's loud. Um, yeah, what, what do you make of the defensive display, first of all? No, let's start right about What do you make of the goalkeeping display? I thought, it was, I thought Slocum was good. Yeah, we discussed this, didn't we? I, I, I honestly think that's his best performance. Probably one of his best performances in a not shirt, you know? Um, yeah. c- claiming it, he was very confident in the air. Claim, claim some, you know, difficult balls in the air. Um, 
you know, really managed the game well for me at the end. Uh, you know, collecting the ball and going down for a few seconds, little things like that. Um, that I think we needed a little bit more of throughout the team. Uh, so I, I thought Slocum on the night, alongside maybe one or two others, were really good. Mm. What do you make of the central defensive display then? That I've already spoken about those three. <clears throat> yeah, they were good, weren't they? They were definitely good. Um, and you, you can't pin the goals on 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 the just those players because the box was full. Well, w- well, on the second goal, I think it's Wotton is out jumped. Yeah. Now I've watched. I've, I was watching the game. They were putting the ball to the back post a lot from corners, especially first half, and it was straight in front of where we were sat in the car. Wotton won every ball first half from a corner. He was climbed upon a few times. Um, a few wrong corners given. I think a few Wotton headed it onto their player. He didn't lose a header. So what a time to lose that header. Does that come down to desire? Don't know. But I would have said the rest of the game there was no problem. So it's just one of those that he was out jumped for that final one. So yeah, I agree. You can't put it on the def- on the defenders for for the, for the goals we conceded. Well, the central defenders necessarily. Yeah. Wing backs. Four cheeks on was you, you said it didn't you on Twitter? I, I thought he was probably like he got man of the match, but it's probably one of the most thoroughly deserved man of the matches we've seen this season because we have seen some quite odd man of the matches I think this season. But um, <clears throat> yeah, he was good. Richardson, you know, he had a really good game, and I I think. You know, some of my friends that watched the game on TV that weren't, uh, you know, haven't been to watch knots or anything like that were saying how good he was. Um, obviously, he sort of makes the, the error there late in the game. Looking back, you know, the player does make a lot of it, but you just you just got to have that awareness to be careful in those situations. Um, and I think that comes with experience. And obviously, he's a, he's a young player. I don't think we should be getting on his case at all. I mean... I can understand maybe, you know, near to the time it happens, the emotions running high, you're angry because of what you've just seen, things can be said and stuff like that. But, you know, on reflection, um, I mean, yeah, he probably shouldn't have gone in and got a foul out the way he did. But, you know, we shouldn't have conceded two goals in the manner that we did from set pieces. It was just one of those, isn't it, really? So Richardson, I thought he was good, but obviously slight error at the end. Yeah, I won't talk about him too much when I get to the retain list, but I think he's a knots player next season, personally. I I'd, like so. I'd like I'd yeah. like him to be, yeah. Mm-hmm. Midfield two, Matty Palmer. My dad, I spoke to my dad after the game. He said someone needed to tell Chickson and Palmer they were playing extra time in a in a high intensity match because it didn't look like they no, even knew they were in extra time. Those two was just unbelievable. Matty Palmer, thoroughly deserved player of the season, was absolutely fantastic, yeah. absolutely brilliant. So. I, I Palmer, I, I literally can't put any. I can't say anything bad about him. Jim O'Brien, not as impactful as I thought he could have been. He's a, he came off, didn't he? He's the player you wanted on right at the end. We've said yeah. it all season. We want that kind of player on at the end of the game, mm. and we didn't have him. No, no. That no. that was that was yeah. That was one of the problems. Obviously, you need someone like that to come on. And then obviously you lose one of those, you lose one of those players that you can bring on late in the game when Cal goes down injured. Mm, exactly. So yeah, didn't really go well from that point of view. Let's uh, let's talk about Ruben. How do you see Ruben? Oh, I thought he was okay, but they were on him all the time. And when yeah. Cal when Cal went off, all the focus was on Ruben. I think good penalty, very good penalty under the pressure. I knew he'd score. I, we both said he'd score last week yeah. on the on the Pavis perspective, but I think he was I think he was carrying a knock midway through that first half as well. Personally, yeah, he um, did look like he was limping a little bit, didn't he? And then we've we've had a brief. We can't really talk about Cal Eli. You know what? I, I, <clears throat> he obviously does well for the penalty, doesn't he? Um, you know, winning the ball back and stuff like that. But for me. Could, could have done better. Um, there was a few moments where the overlap was on in the game and he just turns and tries to take a player on where he could just keep it simple. And I'm sure, I'm surely been told to, to keep it simple as well. Uh, so quite, it's quite a frustrating watch for me personally. I, I don't know how other people felt. But yeah, that's... that's yeah. He was good, he was good, but he, he does, he, he definitely has a moment of brilliance, doesn't he, in him? 
very much mm. like Cal, but it it'd have been nice to see Cal, you know, not get injured to see what yeah. could have happened really, because then you've got two very very good players on the pitch. You have. I said to you, didn't I? I said, oh, I just said to you or Jordan. I turned to you and said, this is not a great time for Sam to come on because if this goes for extra time, Sam yeah. doesn't have a next for the whole thing. And mm. I think it proved that there. Um, there, was a, there was a chance of breakaway in the first half of extra time where he's got a good few yards and he gets caught up, doesn't he? And his shot's blocked. And I just think that's that's down to the legs. And then Kyle Wooten, I saw massive mixed opinions about Kyle Wooten. He's probably the most polarising player on social media. Some people absolutely love him, want him to stay. Some people really don't like him. What do you make? What do you make of his performance? I thought he he bust a gut all game. Yes, he didn't score, but he 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 works so hard. Whether that's what we need, he works so, so hard. Yeah, you can't knock him for that in my opinion. You really can't. Uh, like you said, he absolutely put it all out there. Um yeah. I just feel like he had some really good chances uh, in some key areas that you'd just be hoping that he could have put away. Um, but other than that, I think you'd be hard hard not to give him a, a negative you know, opinion because he, I thought he played really well, worked really hard as he always does. One more thing we're going to talk about about this because there's so much more to go on to. Why, uh, someone said, I can't find out, why wasn't... Um, why wasn't Rawlinson brought on? I don't know. I said this, didn't I, in, in, in our Notts County group on, on Facebook, the chat yeah. we've got. I feel like it, it's obviously a target to, to lower the age of the squad. And that's all good and well. Like I understand why the owners maybe want to, to push that. Um, but I, I feel like, like I, I kind of talked about it already. We needed we needed some someone who's been there and done it. You know, he knows what to do late in games to, to sort of wind the clock down, manage the game a bit better, like Rawlinson. You know, I'm, I'm almost certain Rawlinson wouldn't mind booting the ball over the stand to waste a few more minutes or a couple of seconds, stuff like that. Um, yeah, he'd, have dived, he'd have dived in with his head, you yeah. know, if the ball was on the ground to stop it going in right at the end there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's just that sort of player, isn't he? Warrior. Um I just I just felt like we lacked that bit of I can't think of the word, but just just players that have have been there, they've done it, they know what to do. In that moment, they can think at the click of a finger, and it's it's not. I don't know. You don't. Some young players just have it, don't they? But obviously, some players it, it comes with time. But I just feel like Roll yeah, Rawlinson should have been on the pitch for me later in the game. Should have been brought on. Yeah, I, if I'm wrong, I'm looking at the last three playoff campaigns and thinking like, yeah. where was my opportunity? Yeah, where was my opportunity? So this obviously very very disappointing. The whole the whole thing. I, I woke up the next morning and I was absolutely devastated, more so than than when it happened. Because as Notts fans, we're programmed to think when that goal goes in in the 96th minute, we're programmed to think this is Notts. We're going to yeah. lose. Yeah. Also. I want to put it out there. This is no bitterness. Six minutes out of time, some fans were blaming the beach ball going on the pitch. That was about 30 seconds. I don't know where six minutes of out of time came from at all. Not not at all. No. What what's what's happened in that in that half other than the beach ball is going on the pitch and a penalty goal that not like it needs to be checked by VAR, was it? I don't think that was I don't know where six came from. So no. um Bertrand said the same. Um not a clue. Not a clue. I want to forget that in a hurry. That is more painful than the Harrogate loss for me. That's more painful than the Torquay loss because that was on that was in our own stadium. You you can't you couldn't lose in a worse way, could you? You literally couldn't. You literally couldn't. At yeah. the and it was literally the death of the game. It was. It really, really was. Um, yeah, that, that sums that up, really. I don't know what else to say about that game. I just feel like I saw someone say Luton lost three consecutive years in the playoffs. Look where they are now. I feel like it starts to become, there starts to be a point, and I'll get on this with the retain list in a minute, there starts to be a point where it becomes a, a problem. Like one year, two years, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a funny thing. Three years now, it's gone final, semi-final, quarter-final. Get the playoffs again. My 
confidence, and I'm sure yours, your your confidence was knocked from the previous two years. If we get playoffs again next year and we don't finish top three, you're, I know for a fact you'll be saying we're not winning this, and I'll probably be saying we're not winning this, depending yeah, on yeah. the circumstances. So I, I I can't I don't want there to be a mental block with playoffs. Four in the last five years we've lost. Doesn't matter who comes in through the door. You need to win one of the playoffs to get that that sort of hoodoo gone, don't you? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> retain list then. Retain list came out. What do you make of that? I don't think there's any shocks in there, to be honest. I think we'll go to release players. I think Palmer, Tyrese Palmer, never really broke into the squad. Um, and I know, uh, I think he struggled on, on his low move as well. Um, Lacey, you know, quite injury prone. I feel like he spent a lot of time out. So, you know, for a key player as he is, I think it can be really disruptive. You, you know, don't get me wrong. I think if you, if you didn't have the injuries that he had, I think there's without a doubt he'd have an extension and it had probably been before the end of the season as well. Um, but D Dion is the one I'm most gutted about because I feel like he can bring a lot. He can. Uh, but I, on this, on the same token, I, I, I kind of still understand it. I just feel like we need a change somewhere. Something needs to change. I'm not saying it's just that particular person or area. I just mean, I, I think we're going in the right direction to, to some degree, but something has to change somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's that turnover uh, of, <laughs> of, of personnel, new characters. Because, um, you know, you, you can't have too many bodies around in my opinion, that have lost the playoffs consecutively as not have because it's it's looming in your in your mind, you know. Yeah, um, good to have you with us, Casey. Something quite interesting there. To only have three players on the release list when there were multiple who couldn't get near the squad. Um, yeah, three. I thought there would be more than three. Yeah, yeah. And that that reads Casey. We uh, read him keep as many as possible and let the new gaffer decide what he does with them. I. I absolutely love Dion Kelly Evans. Like we had him on an interview. What a what a fantastic guy. Stayed for 45 minutes after the interview had finished just to chat to us about anything and everything. And I did say after the Stockport game, it, and I don't feel it was reactionary either to to losing that Stockport game because it was a it was a hard loss. And this kind of links to this what Chris said that I flashed up a minute ago. The only way winning league is getting out. I said to you, George, didn't I? I said. You don't win a league with Dion Kelly Evans at right back. I, I wouldn't. I, I don't think you can win. You can't win a league with Dion Kelly Evans at right back. He wouldn't have got in that Stockport squad. You wouldn't. I don't think he'd get in the Wrexham squad. You have to have that that player that can do everything. You know, we've got Jaden Richardson that we had. Can he defend brilliantly? Was letting quite a few crosses come into the box. Max has said there, is he a modern day fullback? He will not let you past. He will be an absolute pain, but will he get forward and produce every game? No. Richardson gets forward and produces, well, he's, he's still a raw talent. He gets forward every game, does what it takes, but has he got the defence? We need we need Richardson, but he needs to work on his defending a little bit and his final product. So I, I also agree with what you say, George, about we've had some of these players now for years. Now, Alex Lacey, I'm so good he's gone. Because I, I said to you as well, look what's going to happen. He'll go and play two, three straight seasons without picking yeah. up an injury. And he'll be the best player in the National League. And he'll go up to League, league Two, back up to League One. So yeah. good. So good. I thought he was the best defender, bar chicks, and best, best defender we had on the pitch. And he got through 120 minutes. Didn't look like I he agree. had anything to me. I, I, you wouldn't have kept him, though, would you? I, no, I, would, have, no. I would have kept no. him. Yeah. I, mean, I personally would have kept him. Yeah, no, I wouldn't have kept him. You wouldn't. But he played 28 games this season and he started the season with the injury, didn't he? It took him a long time to get back in. I don't know how many he missed. Five, six, yeah. seven, eight, eight games. And to still play 28, I think that's pretty good going. If if he was fit all the time and not played with him, in, would he be a nailed on starter for you? Yeah, 100%. I, I say that's what I mean. That's... It can be disruptive, you know, if you have a player like that who is your key centre back. Because I feel like centre backs are like the the main structure of your squad. Um, so for, for your centre back to be getting injured and 
probably one of well, I'm gonna say the best centre back that we have at the club. Um yeah, it's disruptive. It's disruptive. Because you're forever changing changing how it works at the back and it can dismantle things, can't it? I mean played thirteen of the last sixteen. Thirteen of the last sixteen. And some of those were when we were playing Saturday, Tuesday, and he would have been rested for at least yeah. one of those. So realistically, he's not in the squad for a couple of those. I, th I think I think the fact he just played 120 minutes and he played 13 in the last 16, I would have kept him. If he'd have played four of the last 16, yeah, let him go. But when he's been the best centre back in in a game at Medal Lane where they where Grimsby have been on top, I, I I would have kept him because can you imagine now if that's his injury where he's passed him? None of them have been serious serious injuries, have they? Not like what we've seen with some players where they're out for months and months. They've not been serious injuries, and I just I don't think he. I don't think he should have been released personally. I no. yeah, I know what you mean, but I just think now, whatever goes on now with with obviously man managers and and stuff like that, I think we're going to see some some serious movement. You know, I, we tried to sign that that lad from Kidderminster, didn't we? His name Bo. I can't remember what his name is. I know it's starts with a B. Um, you know, so we are looking to strengthen, and it'll just be interesting to see how how much. You know, is it going to be someone who's not proven? Um, I don't think. I, don't, I I personally don't think you can take that risk. I don't. I did a lot. A lot of Grimsby fans comment on our video, and we're quite um, we're honest. We say the game as we see it, so we weren't there saying Knots were smashing it. If you've seen the vlog, we weren't saying oh, Knots are the better team. Grimsby don't deserve this. We were honest. Grimsby yeah. fans replied to our video. They said quite a lot of comments saying enjoyed it. It was nice to have an, an honest review of the game, and quite a few said. Hope you don't end up like some of the teams down here that got stuck that get stuck. And that's my fear. The longer this goes on, Matt said it on our phone in on Sunday night. Was is this the best chance? Because all of a sudden, season one, we're not like, you know, we, we didn't feel like a national league side, do you know what I mean? I thought yeah. we were gonna win the league. Season two, just missed out. We're quite we'll, we'll we'll be all right. We've been in there three seasons. This is our fourth season. When do we start to become a fixture of the national league? Do you know what I mean? Mm. We, I said to you, there's not a chance we spend more than two years in this league. Another a bad season next year, we're looking at five. When does five become ten? Look at Wrexham. Look at Stockport. Stockport went down to the National League North. I'm not saying that'll happen to Notts, but I don't. I, I personally think we've tried. We, we've gone with some un, untested players and players that haven't been tried from a few from abroad and things like that. It's not worked. Not worked. Yeah, but um, I like what you said. You know, if you know, if you had, you could bring someone in with a lot of experience. You could potentially bring this kid in, the player in that we looked at, and you know, he could be very good. But yeah, we've got to get experience in there. I'm not saying age wise, just quality, like Matty Park. I, I think, I think <clears throat> Kidderminster wouldn't be too much. I think that it's not proven, is it? But I don't think it's a huge difference, is it? Do you know what I mean? Mm. I, I I do feel like he could probably step up to the plate. Oh yeah, I, I think Kidderman could come. Is he bright? Was he a Brighton player? I'm not sure, but I feel like players like that could come in, and kid, teams like Kidderman could come in and probably survive over Kings Linen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Not 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 easily, but it's, it can't, it's, it's, there's some players in that league below that that could manage here easily. Yeah. So let's go through. Let's go through the retain list then. Yep. <clears throat> so let us know in the chat as well what you think. Sam Slocum, I think I I want to see him stay and stop messing him about and put him as number one. What's your thoughts? I don't know. I do like Sam. He's good, isn't he? But he's been very good since he's come back in. But his professionalism in games where he's been messed about, coming in one week, taking out the next. He's it. His the quality of his passing out from the back's improved. Yeah, I think I, I want to keep Sam Slocum and have him as number one. If, like if you say, if you're if you're going to sign a player like that from Kidderminster, that's obviously good. We want him. We've done our homework on him. You've got to have a player like Sam Slocum behind him. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll say yeah, I'll say stick with Slocum. Yeah. Joel Taylor, get rid. I think it's disappointing because I, there's definitely a player in there. We saw some great games. Uh, with Joel Taylor 
some really good games. Um, and then he just sort of disappeared, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, I, I think I, think... I don't. I don't know. If, I mean, obviously, there, there's a lot of speculation about uh, the manager at the moment. A new manager could come in and think, you know, he, he, I fancy fancy playing him. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. it's football, isn't it? But so, purely, purely from your point of view, now. <laughs> I don't think we have any chance to take passengers that we've paid money for and are going to be on decent wages. I don't think we have any chance. I, I, that's my view. Don't take chance. I'd say keep. Fair enough. Someone's just said Slocum one, Brooks two. I'd, I'd take that. Yeah, I'd take that. Brooks is two. Uh, Kyle Cameron, ridiculous to say anything other than keep. Yeah. Rawlinson. I think keep for the similar reason what you just said about Slocum, because if we're going to be bringing in some maybe younger centre backs, I feel like Rawlinson brings that like old school edge that you, you definitely still need in your game. But you're more of a modern day centre back, do you know what I mean? It's sort of the cliche, isn't it, of going like, well, we won't be doing next season, but going away to Dover on a Tuesday night. You want to yeah. play that Rawlinson on. Um, I was 50 50, but I think keep because yeah. great backup. Great backup to have. Not a starter for me next year. Not at all. Jim O'Brien. I think it's time to part ways with Jim. Yeah, it pains me to say it because I do like Jim. He's been class as well. Great servant for the club. Um, was, you know, key in the, the talks when the club were really, you know, in bother. Oh, People not being paid and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I, there's no, no no reason other than, like you said, I just think it's time for him to sort of move on. Don't you think as well, I feel like unless you're an exceptional player now, we should be looking at a very different side from the first season. Unless you're an exceptional player still in this squad, I think. Yeah. Um, Kyra Mitchell, number one transfer target last year. I hope this comes back. To, I hope it comes back to bite me. I really hope I look stupid, but I think get rid. Personally. Yeah. I'd, I... No, no passengers. Can't afford it at all. I'd be interested to see if you could just loan him out somewhere. You know, just yeah, get, getting that game time, and because that for me, that's what he needs. He need, like, I understand he never really, you know, hit the ground running at knots, but he was never given a run of games. It, you know, it is hard for a player, I, I feel, to to really hit fine form. And I, and I know when you're given your chance, you've got to grasp it with both hands. Look at Vincent; he's the prime example of that. But I, I don't really, I don't know. I just feel like. He needed a run. He needed a run in the squad. And it's difficult when you've got one. So. Yeah, fair point. Carl Roberts, keep, if possible. Yeah, keep. I, I, to be honest, I don't think we'll have a problem keeping Carl. Might be wrong, no. but I don't, no, I, don't, I don't think we'll have a problem keeping Carl. Um, Aaron Neman, keep. Keep, yeah. Definitely. Uh, Ed Francis. I think... <laughs> It's definitely not worked out the way they wanted it to because I think he, he was planned to be like main Doyle's replacement, basically. I think Laird Francisco. I think. I know you like him. I think it was okay when he came on on, on Monday night, but I think if it's not worked out now, he says it's going to work out in the future. I'm going to say keep. Fair enough. Frank Vincent, key, key, but I don't know what's gone off. So yeah. um, crazy. Elijah Sam, I think it's time to let Sam go. Yeah, I said he might get shot down for that. I've heard, I don't know how true it is. I've heard he's the highest earner. Mm. If that's true, I think he has to go purely for the good of the team. Yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments. Would you let Sam go? Are you agreeing with me? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, mm. I do like Sam, and he, you know he, he gave us some good moments this season. I mean, he's gave us some good moments whilst he's been at Knots. But like, I just feel like if he is on, you know, speculated wages that we've seen, we could be bringing in maybe a couple of good players. Yeah, I agree. Uh, two more, <laughs> Ruben Rodriguez. 
keep at all costs. Even if someone came in with a ridiculous I mean, form. form I, I, was, I, I was thinking this today, right? I think of it like this, like, you know, th- we're disappointed that Wooten is not under contract and we're not getting a fee for him. It was a big discussion point in January because, um, you know, there's a lot of talks of him le- like being being bought and, and things like that. Um, if if we're keeping Ruben at all costs, we need to offer him a new contract that's longer because if we're going to just keep him for one more season and then he's going to leave on a free, I just feel like the system we have in place is not working properly. So I think probably offer Ruben a new contract. And if we're not going to do that, like, do we try and, and, and get the money for him? I, I don't know. I don't want to do that. But, you know, from a football and, and business perspective, you know, you've got to really think of the pros and the cons of and the risks. Yeah, final one, Lewis Knight. Don't say anything over the keep. Don't say anything over the keep. Mm. I, I've seen, I, I, given it's, it's the league below, Bradford, Bradford Park Avenue, we've already discussed, it's not a massive difference in that league with some teams. I've seen the goals he's scored. Some of the goals he's scored, one-on-one with the keeper, comfortable, chip the yeah. keeper. Do you remember a couple, there was a game, might have been Stockport home. Carl Wilton gets two one on ones, puts them straight both for the keeper. Do you remember? Yeah. It's down the family stand end. Um, Lewis Knight scores those, trust me. I think Lewis Knight, he's, he is lightning fast as well. Yeah. Lightning fast. So, what are you thinking about Lewis Knight? Don't upset me, please. I say keep, but I, I do think it's odd that we put him out on loan. Oh, I think it's for match fitness. Yeah, but for what? Well, he wasn't going to get in the Knots team, was he? Just come back from injury. Yeah. I think we'd have just bought Zach Brunt in at the time as well. Yeah. What are, you thinking, what are you thinking? Play with two wingers next season, Aaron Neman and Lewis Knight. I think we'll send them back. <laughs> what? A bit of pace? Yeah. Imagine, imagine, the, imagine the fullbacks, uh, Lewis Knight and Aaron Neman. They'd be shattered after like half an hour. Trying yeah. to try and that. No, I don't think that, that I don't think that would actually work. I'm just joking about that, but um it could be an option. So could be a possibly an option. And then the contracts offered. Richard Brindley, would you like him to accept? It should be a straight yes, shouldn't it? I mean, yeah, but I just think talking about a bit of a turnover of of, of, of starters. From the, yeah. Like it's one of them. I'll be happy if he does extend. But I also won't be gutted if he doesn't. Kind of on the fence of it. Mm. Um, you're saying turnover of starters. Just makes me think about Torquay as well. Yeah, I know, I know they're, they're, I know they weren't expected to be up there this last season, but look where they finished this season. Realistically, they didn't get anywhere near the playoffs. And they had a massive turnover, didn't they? <clears throat> I think it's a, it's a fine balance, isn't it? Really fine balance. I think Richard Brinley, I'd like to stay. That's what I was saying about players from the first season that are exceptional. So from there, I think, not exceptional, but very good. I think you've got Richard Brinley in there and I think Sam Slocum. The rest should pretty much be a new side, apart from Kyle Roberts. Uh, Kyle Wooden, do you want him to accept? I mean, obviously it's, it, it would be ideal. But... You know, I've seen someone mention it already about Cheek and maybe it's a short-term solution, yeah. But I just feel like how many times this season have we left? And honestly, like I think Kyle Wharton is amazing. Don't get me wrong. His finishing really lets him down. Yeah. But you literally just talked about the Stockport game when he like has two strikers opportunities and doesn't put them away. Um, and I feel like there's, there's a lot of that. Um, his conversion's not great. So if you bring in someone whose conversion is better and has done it at this level and maybe just brings something different to the, to the, to the team. What about someone that plays off him like we had first season with Dennis and Thomas and if you can get someone that he really pairs well with? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but I'm all for it. Whatever gets us up. Yeah, whatever um, gets us up. Yeah, I, I, I like one, I do. But I think it's it's, it's a difficult one for me. Mm. It is, I, I don't know. I, I want him to I'd be over the moon. I'd be over the moon if you if you sign a contract, but I just don't see it. If if Portsmouth yeah. are after you, why would you? No. Um, Adam Chickson, please sign it. 
Yeah, yeah. I thought I, I think he's class, especially after the interview. You the get his the characteristics and stuff like that. You just know he, he's devoted to knots now as well. So yeah, I'm yeah. sure I'm sure he'll ex- extend. Yeah, and I think he pretty I think he likes staying at knots unless he wants to move closer to home. Um, and Tain and Brooks, I'd like to see him sign again. I th- yeah, I think he will. Yeah, I think he's supposed to be very good. Supposed to be yeah. very, very good. Um I'd like to see him in preseason. Or maybe just like we've, we've sort of discussed things like this before, playing for trophy games. Yeah. Put a bit of faith in the youth. Mm. Callum, I feel you. Chicks and don't sound like a kickoff. I think you will. I think you will. We enjoyed us talking about you the other day on that on the interview. He really did. He really did. Um <clears throat> Okay, we've got we've got to talk about Ian Birchall now. We'll talk about Birchall first, then we're gonna to go and talk about what we need next season. We've talked about who we think should stay, but what we need. This is something interesting, actually. The under-19 contract, if that's spelt right, Charlie, your star viewer. Uh, I'm not even going to try and say that. There's the young lad, Muna Kandafa. I hope that's right. Yeah, you think you've got to on. Apparently very, very good as well. Yeah. Really good. And that's, I think, why Palmer has been released. He's, he was, he's been on trials at uh, Barnsley and Blackburn this season as well. Yeah, so he's had he interest. Looks- he looks good, and they've offered him a senior contract, so that would be real. That could be really good. I can another, see another one. Let him play. Put him in preseason. Maybe chuck him on for ten minutes here and there. Let him play. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd, 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 I feel like it could be another a tete sort of thing where he gets snapped up, and then we don't see, we don't see, get to see him and not. But we'll talk about Birch, and then we'll talk about what we need to see next season. So, George Ian Birchnell, will he be Notts manager on the first day of the season next season? Yes or no? No. I think he's gone, to be honest. H- hurts me to say it. It does. I, I like Birchnell. I-, I think I- he will. Be. I think he will be. Do you? I honestly do. <laughs> I hope you're right. I honestly hope you're right. I just don't think... I- it's like... I feel like... Like I was saying, I'm looking for a Twitter. Forest Green fans just assume, assume it's happening. Yeah. As the Knots fans. like We're seeing people here saying the new the new manager's going to come in and do it. Like It's like we've almost accepted the fact that he's not going to be here next season. Yeah. People are talking about compensation for him. You're not going to get much compensation for a manager, I don't think. Um, not, not of any no, not when from what we want to do with the club. But I, I honestly think, and I'm going to make it look stupid because it will come out as soon as we end this video or tomorrow or on Monday that he's gone. I think he stays. Okay. I, I, I hope so because he talked about being here for a project. He did talk about being here for a project. And I hope he sticks by that. I really do. I know betting's been suspended. I do get that. But he was one to three on to be Forest Green manager. I checked a few times that day it was suspended. And within an hour of him being suspended, he'd gone from one to three to four to seven. So the odds had actually got better in Knott's favour and it was suspended. Usually if betting gets suspended, it happens very, very, very quickly like almost straight away that the appointment's made. I've seen it in the past with managers, betting suspended and bam, it's done. It's announced. So I just think, I think, I hope, I hope you'll be there. I do. Me too. Because I think we'll start again. Casey thinks he'll go. A few people saying that they think he might go. Um, do you think there's a there's a talk about lack of backbone that he instills in his teams? Do you think that that is the players or it's him? I don't know. It's hard and to if, say, it's isn't a, it? if it's the players, does that come down to that's some that's a little bit of oversight in recruitment that we should have been looking at? Didn't really replace Doyle. Yeah, definitely. That that is something that's missing, without a doubt. That edge. Um, yeah. And you know, with Dion with Dion gone now, we we. 1000% needed a little bit of that in there. Yeah. yeah. Where, where's it coming from now? I agree. You look at Stockport, the kind of players they've got in their side, they've got them up. Do you know who, who one of those players I just feel like is a presence? Is that, is it's uh, Sam Minahan, is it? Minahan, yeah. And then we had a Stockport fan in early, if you're still in, that is now, but like that's the kind of player we need. Someone that is, that is that focal point. I think they backed on this season. I think. Do you remember when Doyle went to a coaching role and we won six in a row? And then we lost the last game against Bromley. I think it kind of gave a false sense that Doyle can instill it from the sidelines. But realistically, Doyle can do all he can from the side. 
But when you're 1 1 going into the 115th, 120th minute in extra time, what can Doyle realistically instill from that sideline? It's all about who's on the pitch. You're probably not even listening to your manager necessarily at that point. You're probably doing everything you can to A, keep running, and B, make sure the other team don't score. Yeah. You need it on the pitch, definitely. How old's Kyle Cameron? 24, 25? I'm not sure. I'll quit that. Because. I think, you know, 25, 25. He's not, he's not massively old. I think he's very good for his age experience wise and ability wise, but um, not massively old. Darren Smart, does the inversion deserve a third go at getting us up? Uh, I think this would be classed as a second go at getting us up. Realistically, I'll give him two full, two full goes at getting us up. Then the first one, he did really well to. Yeah. 10 games left. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 10 games left. Great first game against Hornchurch. Really, really good there. That was enjoyable. <laughs> um, so you so you don't think you're there. I think you will. I think you will okay. be there. Okay. Do you think do you agree with Casey's point earlier that there's quite a lot of players still on there that they might want a new manager to look at? Or do you think it's just purely because the club haven't decided yet? I I, I honestly don't know. I, I, it's difficult. What do you think? Uh, I'm not sure, but someone someone put in earlier that last season there was a video straight after the retain list came out, or quite quickly after the retain list came out, detailing and it was Bertrand talking about why certain players have been retained and there's no video now about that. Could read into that. Um, yeah, I think I think everything's going to be put under a mi- uh, microscope, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, you've got to think in in terms of Birchnell, He was new to the club, the club and Hunt. And him would have been eager to, to get as much, you know, of him coverage of him out as they can. Uh, whereas now there's obviously a bit of speculation. It'd be nice to maybe put it to rest and him to be doing things like that, but it's not going that way. No, uh, I'm really unsure about his mannerisms after games and whether they. Suggest- Maidenhead, Maidenhead was fishy to me. Maidenhead was a bit odd. Yeah, and I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it was a bit odd, but at the same time, I just don't see it. I said a few weeks ago, why would you not go to a team in League One? Take the team out of it. Why would you not go to that team in League One? I don't know. The owner's a bit of an odd one. Comes out with some things that I just think, yeah. I mean, here you've got very good owners. That I think would be very respectful. Mm. Yeah. I'd like to think we get we get a lot of things from uh, Jason Turner, don't we? Quite a lot. I feel like we need one of those in the next few days, just de- just to detail what's happening. And I think the longer that goes on, the worse it looks for us with with Birchnell. Yeah, and you know, the longer this goes on, the, the less chance we're getting of some of these free agents. Mm. And there's some yeah. really good free agents out there at the minute. Yeah, you were sending me a few of them, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, in positions we need as well. I think it's Forest Green or no one, though. I do think it's Forest Green or no one. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I think you, you can't be... Yeah, no, nah, I agree. You can't be looking at different jobs all the time. I know he's not looking, but there's only so many times you can be approached and think, yeah, I might go for this. You're either in it or you're not. You can't yeah. keep. You can't keep dipping in and out. I also see Forest Green as an attract, like Birchman as an attractive person for Forest Green, yeah. um, and he fits them quite well because of who they like. But I also don't necessarily see every other team. Like he doesn't wouldn't fit like a, I don't know Gillingham for example. Or I think Forest Green suit him, so I think that's why they were looking for him. Uh, Josh says, "Can I ask a question to you, boys? The lad who you bought off Cal Roberts, how much has he played this year?" Um, Nothing at the start, maybe seven or eight games in a row, scored in almost every one, got February player of the month, got a suspension. I think his wife had a baby, which kept him out for a couple of weeks, and then not so much towards the end of the season. In those six or seven games, he was the best player in the National League comfortably. You couldn't defend him at all. Chesterfield will know that. Halifax at Notts Ground will know that. He scored from about 25 yards out. So, you know, Chris has hopefully the structure we have in place. It's not the manager that affects transfers as much. I do feel, did, did you read? I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. Do you think? 
Yeah. Would you sign for a club that's in limbo with manager? Yeah. No, you wouldn't. Of what, if the manager, what if the manager comes in a week later? How many, how, many Row? how many opportunities do you think I have to sign for a club? I'd sign for yeah, You know what I mean, though? Like, in, in hindsight, in retrospect, if you're a football player, the manager's a very, very key part of the signing. You want to know who you're going to be playing under. You want to know what their philosophies are. You don't just sign for a club blind. I think it, I think it depends on the player. I think if you're like Kidderminster centre back we're looking at, I think you sign even if it's in limbo. I think if you're Michael Sheik, you don't. You can see what I mean. Yeah. There's some players that will take the opportunity. I massively agree with you, though. I do. So I agree with what you're saying. How long does it drag on before it before it? Yeah, it, it it literally needs to. If it's not done by the weekend, it's gone on too long. Yeah. And yeah. it's Thursday today, so you've got one day knots before I'm disappointed. I thought my wounds had healed in case he's just in case he's just put could have done with the man an extra time on Monday he would have scored Eli Sam's chance on that breakaway. I thought my wounds had healed and he's reopened them. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. And it's true. So oh, I can that to you. Jesus. Oh God. you got me there. You got me there. Um so does he stay? Does he go? This is our last video of the season. We've done this 45 weeks in a row. Well, not 45 weeks because there's been a couple of Sunday ones in there. We've done this for a fair few weeks in a row. We haven't missed one this season. Yep. This is our last video of the season. If it came out tomorrow that Birchner had left, we'll more than likely have another video straight tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is our last video. I mean, we're not finished with it yet, but we're more likely... It's our last Pavis perspective of the season. It's our last Pavis perspective of the season. Um, I hope we don't have to do another live. Not because I don't like doing the lives. I love doing it, interacting with everyone. But I also think to myself, yeah, I don't want to be doing one because we need a new manager. Continuity is what I've always asked for. We got continuity. We 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 had it with Birchnell. We've still got it. He's obviously he, he's obviously he's doing some things right because a club in two leagues above want to sign him. So I would stick with him. I would stick with him. Kevin Nolan to return. Watch this space. No, nah, I don't see that. I wouldn't. I don't think I like that either. No, um, I, I get the uh, sentiment, the essence, the essence behind it. Yeah, the sentiment, but you know, it's literally the polar opposite for what the owners owners will want from a manager. Yeah. Is it a paper's perspective when you sat in the cop though? Yeah, yeah. My dad was in the my dad was in the pavis. He told me his perspective, so this is all from my dad's point of view. But Callum. Can't be doing us like there's, that. Yeah, there's no need for that, Callum. No need. I know we saw you on the way and checked our tickets, but there's no need. So, um, Stuart Pierce stepped down from West Ham to pursue managerial options. Please don't. Please don't. I couldn't take that. Another I, one. Yeah, another one that would be the polar opposite to what the end as well. Yeah, it'd be awful. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, need big news to keep us alive, Royston says. We'll be alive. We're just going to take a few weeks off. I think. Everyone needs a few weeks off knots after this. Um, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have our pre-season videos. We were at those last year, sort of weekly roundups. We'll, we'll go back to lives before the season starts again, sort of as, as everything builds up. But I think it's good to have a couple of weeks away. Um, so, yeah, I think so. Before we go on to what we need for next season, George, Keen yeah. says, would you, have Doyle as, would you give Doyle a shot at the job if Birchnell left? I would say, from my point of view, 1,000% no. No, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I I wouldn't. No, I mean, I think I think he'd be a fun favourite until things possibly start to go wrong. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't. Who no. knows? Do you know what I mean? Like, who actually knows? I, I mean, if I it did happen, you would be a bit dubious, wouldn't you, to think, is this really a, a good option? Gives me Ian Everett vibes at Barrow, though. That does. Yeah. So. Uh, they did put, they did put, they released something, didn't they, after the game? I don't know if it was when the retain list came out. They said that plans have already been well underway for next season, which is good. Which I, 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 I had expected nothing less. If yeah. they'd already been planning well underway for next season, that means they would have looking with players for a club that could have been in League Two. That means they'll have already made connections with some players that could have been in League Two. If you just said to me this time last year, you're going to get Matty Palmer sent to mid, I'd have laughed at you. So we can't say there's not going to be players from high leagues coming in. 
imagine they get another central midfielder to fill that that floating spot where we see Ed Francis, we see Jim O'Reilly, we see Vincent, and he's another player that's that that level of Matty Palmer in the midfield. Yeah, it could happen if we can keep Matty Palmer, which I think we will. So. I think it could be really interesting this summer. And we'll have videos on, on whatever happened. But George, to finish us off then. Can I just say, on the, on the staying on the Doyle thing, I do feel like he has that thing about him where he feels like he's got unfinished business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, because we got relegated with him in the squad. Um, and, you know, the season after we was talking about how special it will be to get Knots back up and it will be a huge achievement for him and things like that. I do feel like there's that, that feel of I've got unfinished business at this club. Yeah, this is when this time tomorrow we're doing a live video because Bertrand was left and he's taken Doyle with him. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, but Adam says Doyle could do what Luke Garrow did at, at Bourne Wood. We don't know. I feel like, I feel like, he, I feel like he'd be a very well respected from the players, but of course, um, yeah, right, George. What do we need next season to, to win the league? Because I, I agree, we're not going up in the playoffs. A new manager. If Birchall goes. Right, I was going to say, what do we need? Um, what do we need? I'm going to tell quite you what we need. Quite a lot. I'm going to tell you what we need. Go on. We need a player that replaces Doyle's position, which we didn't get last season. We need a player that comes straight in, commands the respect of the players. He's on the pitch as often as Doyle's on the pitch in this first year and almost two years and takes games by the scruff of the neck when they're getting hard grabs players tells them this is what you need to do right now take some of the younger players we're going to have we're going to have you know possibly lewis knight playing aaron Neman, you know gets those players and he tells them exactly what they need to do leads from the front i think makes matty palmer an even better player alongside him i think we need a striker if wharton stays to play off wharton and compliments him, which I thought Wes Thomas was fantastic at. Failing that, if Wharton goes, we need a proven goal scorer in this league. Billy Waters, is it? Uh, Halifax, Michael Cheek, Bromley, a, a goal scorer. And failing that, I think you've mentioned it to me. Do we need to do what? Not ridiculously, do we need to spend on a player? Not no, not as much as Mullen or Palmer or Madden. Do we need to do that, do you think? No. You don't think so? There's options. There's definitely options. We need, But we, we if, if Wharton goes, we need a goal scorer. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. So that I think we need that midfielder. We need a striker. I think we need a... Uh, I think we need... I would take Richardson. Person. Yeah, I would. I would. We we definitely need someone like that, and then we'd need like some sort of backup as well. There. Yeah. Um, yeah. Defensive wise, I think we'd need. We need two centre backs. Two or three. You think? Maybe two, and then assess it as it goes, and then maybe get one on loan. Yeah. Let's say from uh, let let's say we start the season next year, and we have. A kid who meets a centre back. We've signed. Yeah. We've signed either Billy Waters or Michael Cheek. And then we get Connor Lemon Evans. And then a few unknown players around that. Would you be happy with that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you're happy with that. Mm. I think attacking wise we're sorted. Yeah. I'd possibly say there needs to be one more def- one more centre back in there though. A, a proven centre back. It's going to be it, it's going to be a very interesting summer. Very yeah, interesting. it is for sure, for sure. I think we could see a, a couple go as well. Yeah. If you if we sold Ruben, would you reinvest it all? I would. I can't. Yeah, I can't see why you wouldn't. Yeah, you'd have to, wouldn't you? Yeah. You could get like if Ruben went. People, some people are speculating maybe 350,000, 400,000. Oli Palmer was 300,000. Yeah, Ruben Rodriguez has, has a high ceiling. Let's even say 300,000. I think you're yeah. looking at best case scenario, aren't you? Like, Wrexham yeah. would have paid massively over the odds for Palmer. Yeah, they would. They would. You're right. 
even 200,000, you could get a fair few decent players from the National League for that. So Chris has just checked and can confirm Michael Cheek yeah. is, out, is out of contract. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Could, I don't know if he could make a step up to League Two. Who cares? Literally just gets out of this league. Yeah. It doesn't work next year. That's, that's what I mean. I, I don't think teams in League Two are going to go for him. Oh, okay. Okay. I think possibly. I think I think he stays in the National League, but who he stays with. George, go to our poll because this could have a huge bearing on our season next season. The yeah. poll man for the final time this season, the poll man. Thank you. I've really enjoyed being the poll man. You're so, you're so good at it. Like, <laughs> you just uh, it out of love, you? I practice all the time. Um, who will win the playoffs? I'll start from the bottom. 3% say Chesterfield. 18% say Grimsby. 24% say Hol- Solihull. 55% say Wrexham. First of all, who do you want? Who do you think? Uh, I I think the same for, for both. Okay. Who do, oh, do I? Who I want, actually, I'm going to say Wrexham. Because if they don't go up this season... God only knows how much they're going to spend next season Four. and who they bring in. Uh, who do I who do I think will go up, Grimsby? Put your hand up in the put your hand, so how many people have voted for Chesterfield? Does it look like? Uh it'll be three people. Put your hand up if you're one of the people that vote for Chesterfield. What? I think Chesterfield go up. Get up. No, Did they're not. not. See- have you, no, not seen not. Not. have you not seen Halifax's home record? Oh my god. Halifax's yeah, home end record. End the live. End the live. <laughs> right, thanks for watching. <laughs> I've, done this before. I've done this before. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. <laughs> no, honestly, honestly, it would be so Chesterfield to do that. They they won two one away at Halifax who are a good side. Let's be honest. We all wanted to finish as high as we could. We shot ourselves in the foot getting a, a tie with Grimsby and potentially Wrexham. You've got Halifax who are twenty to one to win the the playoffs, and then Solihull, who who I think Solihull are beatable, more beatable than Wrexham. It would have been better if we finished seventh, to be honest, or or third. So I think Chesterfield do it. Honestly, I think they beat I think they beat Solihull, and then I think they win the playoff final. Who do I want? It's got Wrexham. Please, be, it? please, yeah. Forest, Mansfield, and Chesterfield all going up. Then Tom, no, just Chesterfield, Chesterfield, Huddersfield, Port Vale. I'm staying my claim. Oh, I do, I do fancy Chesterfield. I don't. I, I think they'll do it. Yeah. Would you be? Would you be absolutely gutted if they did it and left Wrexham in this division with us? Yeah, I would be. I don't think we've struggled against them. You know, as a team, I think we. I, th- I think we probably could have beat them in the in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, but as it as it goes elsewhere, I think they just have started spending silly again, wouldn't they? So get them out. Yeah, I agree. I agree. George, how have you found this season before we finish? Uh, hard at times. It's been, it's been, you know, we've seen some good football, but we've also had some very, very disappointing moments where we've underachieved in games. Um, conversions not been good enough this season, but then you know we've had some really brilliant moments as well. But on a whole, I think you've got to look at the season for what it is, and yeah, there's different factors, but you know, as black and white as you can get it, we we have finished our lowest position we ever have as a club yeah. uh, we've been knocked out the quarterfinals of the the playoffs um we obviously I'm, I'm 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 as well ranking this off things that players and managers have said you know kyle cameron was saying that he wanted to get promoted this season he said he wanted to win the league but promoted and win the trophy and, win the trophy. and we didn't achieve either of those so for me we have underachieved regardless of what's going on elsewhere yeah I, I agree. I agree. We've underachieved. Um, Chris sums it up. I've enjoyed the season, but ultimately we've failed again. We have failed. The longer we stay in this league, the harder it is to get out. I don't fancy knots in the playoffs next season. Even before we made signings, manager, whatever, I don't fancy knots in the playoffs. I would go into a playoffs. We could have won the last 10 games 
and got a playoff spot, I'd still be, I'd still feel badly about it. We have to win the league. Let's hope this time next season we are Stockport. Yeah. Let's hope yeah. that because that's how we get out of this division, I think. And I think a lot hinges on the playoffs. Um, and I think, George, do you agree? I think within the next month, I'd like to see a month and a half, pretty much all the signings sorted. Yeah, sooner the better. Sooner the better. Um, thank you to everyone that's watched tonight. Really appreciate it. The chat's been absolutely brilliant. Seeing all your comments. Sorry, I couldn't put them all out there. Uh, if you have um, supported us this season at all by even liking the video, commenting, subscribing, it's been massively appreciated. We almost made our goal of 2,000 subscribers. We've got a couple of videos lined up in pre-season for you. Uh, we're going to take a bit of a break. You know, like I said, 45 episodes straight. We're going to take a little bit of a break. And we'll be back with maybe the first video will be that kit giveaway we do every year. We're looking at maybe doing a home and away kit, depending on how nice that kit is. George, final prediction, what colour is the away kit going to be? I was going to tweet this earlier. I really want it to be purple. I think it's going to be bright yellow. There we go. Oh, dear. I see it. I see it. But as I've said, um, keep your eyes out for that. We're going to have a few weeks break. We'll still be active on our social media channels, though. Let's hope we're not doing another video live tomorrow about Ian Virtual leaving. But as always, said it every video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Have a fantastic summer.